We've now got our layering, we've got our drones, we've got our additive and subtractive melody. Um, and so what I thought I would look at now is phasing. Uh, phasing is a very common aspect of minimalist music, uh, pioneered by Steve Reich. Uh, and it's the one where you have the two tape loops, one uh, at a constant speed and the other one playing the same but at a very slightly slower speed, so it slowly goes out of sync and comes back in. Um, this is, uh, you know, we have we're not playing with tape loops, um, so we have to use rhythmic displacements to achieve the effect. So we're going to pick um, um, one of our tracks here, and what I'm going to do is, having selected that track, I'm going to click on this button here which means that I get a new track with the same settings, same sound and everything. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste uh, that section there and I'm going to copy and paste it down. Okay. So I've got two of the things happening at the same time and I'll just solo those. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it very clear that we've got two distinct tracks at the same time. So what I want to do is I want to pan one hard left and one hard right. And to do that, I'm going to do that in automation. So I can press A or I can just click automation up here. And then on these two tracks, at the minute your automation is on volume, but if we go to pan and pan, we can now change this from the center to left and right, like that. Now if we play that, that shouldn't have an effect on how that feels. But when we start to include the phasing, that's when the, the panning will really be noticeable and kick in. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is this is the this track here is the track that I'm going to treat the rhythmic displacement on. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, and it's going to be we can do every four bars and copy and paste that to there. And that's the one I'm going to edit now. And what I'm going to do is grab all of the notes in that and put them forward by a semiquaver. Copy and paste. Grab all the notes, put them forward by a semiquaver. And I'm going to do this a number of times. Now just be wary that I've just come to the end of my MIDI event there. So for the next go, copy and paste, I'm going to grab them all, move them forward a semi-quaver, but this one that's now outside of that block, I'm going to grab, I'm going to put that all the way at the beginning. And because the computer is trying to help me, it's made my MIDI event longer to cater for that note that went outside the MIDI event, so I've got to resize that. And then let's just have a listen to what that sounds like at this stage. So I'm going to listen to it from here, and they'll both sound the same at this point. And we'll notice a change here.
So you can hear how that gradually changes and makes quite different um, motifs just by moving them along a semiquaver each repetition. I'm going to carry on and finish this and so we can have it do a full cycle. Okay, I think I'm done. And just to double check, if I've moved one along each semiquaver, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and a return to the first, 17. So that's a quick, easy check um, if you're moving them along a semiquaver each time. This is where we got to. Let's listen to what it sounds like to the end. And that's phasing using rhythmic displacement. Fairly simple, straightforward technique which gets good results. And within the mix, let's hear what that sounds like. So you may want to play around with the volume of that in the automation to bring out different notes. But there you go. Good luck.